everyone, this is Julian from AWS and I'm not in my usual settings because I am in Ireland today getting ready for the AWS user group in Dublin tonight. But I wanted to get this new episode out and it's episode 9 already and uh, I had a great, great conversation with my friend Leo Suke. And Leo is a data scientist, he's actually finishing his uh, PhD in Paris right now and believe it or not, he also co-founded a school a few years ago. This school is called the Data Science Tech Institute, and they train data scientists and data engineers uh, with a, a lot of emphasis on math and theory, my favorite subject. Anyway, uh, Leo has a, a great perspective on data engineers, data scientists, and what it takes to be successful, what those jobs are, how important they are, and how they relate to each other. So let's not wait. Let's uh, listen to this conversation. And uh, while you're doing this, I'll have more coffee for the meetup, not beer, yet. Leo, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me today. I have plenty of questions, and I guess the first one is, can you tell us a little bit about uh, DSTI? Um, thank you for having me today. Uh, DSTI is a, is a postgraduate school that just aims to train skilled data scientists and data engineers. Okay, and when did you start? Uh, so we started um, October 2015, mm -hmm. and we have now two cohorts per year, two entry per year, one in spring and one in autumn. Okay, and you have a, an online training and a, an in-class training, right? You have um, both. We have three different modes, oh. exactly. Uh, one, so the regular on-campus training, right. so you just come in for classes on campus. We have the equivalent online, so you follow classes live, online from home for wherever you are around the world and we have a third mode which is we call the Spock mode so no uh, mm -hmm. no pun intended <laughs> uh, which is stands for um, self-paced online courses which is designed for people who work and will basically follow the classes over the course of three years um, at their own pace okay um, so you mentioned your training data engineers mm -hmm. and data scientists so tell us a little bit about those two roles so it's an interesting question because the data scientists have lately been under the spotlights. It's yes. the job of the 21st century, <laughs> the sexiest job, etc. But um, data engineers is here as well. So the, for us, the data scientist is more the math athlete, the math side of the force. Mm -hmm. And um, whereas the data engineer is more related to the IT side, okay. so the IT engineer. and. Um, Actually, you have many different studies for different Gartners and all this kind of thing, which tell that in, let's say, a data science team, mm -hmm. you would need at least two or three data engineers for one data scientist. Okay. So it's wow. an interesting point of view that, um, and to our opinion, the data engineer suffers a bit from the shadow of the fame of the data scientist, but they are equally, if not even like a bit more uh, crucial. Okay, uh, interesting. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. now wondering what happens when you have a team of data scientists with zero data engineers. <laughs> <laughs> this is a team that has been wrongly styled or okay. that just has been hired out of, you know, we need to do AI and oh, they just see. hire data scientists or the place. <laughs> but no, they usually struggle. And like in every team you have, one will do actually the data engineer role. <laughs> okay, so let's zoom in on, on the two roles. Okay, so. Uh, Let's start with the data engineer because right. I, I suppose they they sit uh, you know upstream to uh, to data scientists. So, what does data engineer do? What kind of unique skills do they need to have? What what are their daily tools? So, what does what does that look like? All right. Um, first, I would like to specify a point that um, they do sit upstream, mm -hmm. but also downstream. Okay. What I mean is um, they are here so set of skills to master infrastructure mm -hmm. um, like ideally big data infrastructure but infrastructure as, as general with all you know network related issues system related okay. issues um, storage so their role is made to collect sometimes you know pre-process a bit like clean a bit the data uh, store them and make them available for the data centers to let's say play with Mm -hmm. But they also in some companies downstream because once the data scientist has developed the models and everything, they will be the one industrializing the models, okay. setting in production what has been developed by the data scientist. So of course, it's 
all of, under the big hood of data engineers, mm -hmm. but many different skills, of course. It can be split up in different skills in different areas, but all related to um, strong IT background. So they, they need to be strong with IT. They mm -hmm. need to be strong with development. Um, and they also need to be above trends. What I mean is they don't have to be one, okay, I'm that engineer specialized in this specific language or this specific tool. It's more about, like a bit like DevOps, you know, it's a state of mind, it's a philosophy. Of course, it's a set of tools and technologies, mm -hmm. but it's also a way to optimize, to automate your process. Um, they also need to be master of SQL. We know yeah. Like, yeah, we had this conversation, uh, well, last week, actually, with uh, Francesco, mm -hmm. and he said the top skill you need in machine learning is, uh, is SQL, because cool. <laughs> no, one, no one is going to get your data for you. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's a great quote. And uh, so, yeah, <laughs> they need to be master of SQL. Um, they need to be, yeah, uh, also, you know, aware of the DevOps or all those kind of words like data ops, all those automated tools, mm. CI, CD, all those yeah, kind pipelines. of pipelines, integration, okay. um, and of course, cloud infrastructure, not sure. least. Sure. They allow you to have the power. Okay. So yeah, strong IT background and strong IT mindset. And I suppose they, they need to be knowledgeable about the domain. Exactly. So because otherwise, you have a bunch of SQL tables or logs mm -hmm. or whatever your data looks like. And uh, and what do you do with that, right? So it's not just plumbing and IT no, and true. Uh, spark clusters. No, it's true. Exactly. <laughs> they need to be, especially they were the one to, for example, scrap da scrape data or gather external source of data. You need mm -hmm. to understand what you are doing it for. Um, okay. But also, in our opinion, they also need to know, and I know IT people would disagree, a little bit of math to be mm -hmm. able to discuss and collaborate with data scientists, which okay. are usually math people. Yeah. Um, so. They don't have to go down into the equations, but sure. they at least you know what the linear regression sure. is, what the basic Just concept. enough to communicate exactly. with the data science. So, okay. So, so the data engineer is a unicorn too, right? It actually, it's yes. It's lots of skills. There are not so, so many of them. And after rushing to you know, hire data scientists, now companies realize, man, we need data engineers. We need the right? IT guy. You know? So it's a good career. It's a very good career path. And um, we have companies, for instance, we were um, recently in a big French uh, group who say, I struggle to hire them and I would pay them 1.5 times the salary I paid data scientists. Oh, actually, wow. did you hear that? So, I know. <laughs> Get in touch with me or if you need contacts. <laughs> oh, exactly. We try to, we try to, everybody wants to become a data scientist. Okay. So okay. we try to get those, you know, IT guys out of their development job and say, okay, right. you can go actually further. Okay. So if you're bored with um, vanilla DevOps, <laughs> right? You can become a data, uh, you skilled can, data engineer. You can probably easily transition to data engineer. Oh, very easy. Yeah? Very okay. I mean, with that's a lot of work, of course, but yeah. it, it's along your path. Okay, well, that's good to know. Now, what about data scientists? So, of course, How, your vision, and you know, because of uh, I know you have a very the way DSTI trains data scientists is probably different from a lot of other organizations. So, what are those people? So, for us, they are yeah, as I'm saying, as I said, math athletes. So they are good in math. Um, they also, and this is our issue. Good in IT because they need to develop. They need to, you know, prove that the ID works. Yeah. Um, when they want to train a job on AWS on the cloud, they just need to do them themselves. You know, launch your own machine. That's nothing complicated. But mm. you need to be independent on that side. But from our, as you say, our little difference is DSTI's curriculum is emphasized on math, and the trend nowadays is, you know, to use out of the box, black box tools. Or off the shelf models. Off the shelf models, you know, mm -hmm. like the famous Igibus that works usually well, but our concern is if you need to use them, if, if you work like you are going to use them, you need to know what are the math behind it. You're not gonna be crushing equation every day, mm -hmm. but the better you understand the algorithm you're using, the better you will be able to <laughs> make value out of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a feedback from the students, a few, uh, cohorts back, because we count in cohorts, um, we said like in predictions in machine learning, to go from zero to 90% is rather easy with mm -hmm. all the tools. Yes. At the STI, we learn how to go from 90 to 95%. And this is the difficult because how do you optimize your model? How do you fail to clean your data? And mm -hmm. all those kind of math related issue. 
And also you need to prove what you're doing. It's just not, ah, here it works, but tomorrow if you were to put an algorithm in a plane, uh, you will have to know how and why the algorithm actually works. Mm, interesting. Uh, it, it's, it's a good way of putting it. And, um, you know, but I, I ask myself the question, where would I go next? Where, where, what would I do to understand how to get to 95 or 97 percent? Right? That, that's what you're talking about, looking exactly. at those missed predictions and understanding what, what happened. Exactly. And how do you get further? How to explain what you've done, how to prove? Um, yeah, it's those, those kind of questions that we try to answer by understanding the math behind it and going beyond just the out of the box. Mm -hmm. um, but we also had one, um, an experience where, you know, like if you take R or Python, for example, there's plenty of libraries. And um, what if one of those calculations is actually wrong? So you need to, you, you, you shouldn't rely entirely on the result. You should mm -hmm. understand what actually, if the output makes sense, if there's a logic behind it. And as you say, going further understanding the outliers, understanding the uh, residuals and those kind of thing. And you need to understand the math behind it. So let's keep digging uh, and uh, tell us about two or three uh, math um, domains that help you do that. All right. Because when you look at uh, all those great MOOCs, you know, Andrew NG or uh, Fast AI, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, there is some element of math, of course, but not as deep as what you cover. So tell us about a couple of those courses and how they help. Um, for instance, like statistics, you know, the famous linear regression. But what about multivariate linear regression, logistic regression? And um, in which context can you actually use them? How do you how are your data sets properly designed, the distribution of your data correctly? distributed to, so you can actually use a uh, linear regression. When do you use um, Kosmogorov Smirnov tests? In which context? <laughs> I know they're difficult to pronounce, but it's also difficult I'm to lost. use. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, all this kind of like in statistical concept. Um, for instance, we also have, you know, distributed environment nowadays. Mm -hmm. And are all statistical algorithms part, like distributable? Uh, mm -hmm. Are the results correct when you distribute? Okay. Because you have, you know, concurrent calculations, you need some point together. So all this kind of challenge, understanding the math behind it. Um, also, if you mention deep learning, for instance, yes. you know, uh, very easy to go, Kera, especially with Keras, you know, a few layers, add, 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 boom, train, oh, 92%. Percent That's what I do. <laughs> exactly. Here you're the best. <laughs> but um, what is behind it? Because it's the whole field of optimization, you know, mm -hmm. what is, how does the stochastic gradient descent actually works? Um, when you look at your validation accuracy curve, validation loss curve, um, how do you know you're on the right path? How do you know how, which, what would lead to any uh, improvements? Mm -hmm. and understanding the field of optimization, which is the foundation of um, neural networks. Uh, and works. you go very, very deep on that. We do, we do. And this is yeah. the point of, of uh, DSTI. For instance, also very a uh, huge field which is time series where mm -hmm. you know regular algorithm cannot help deep learning is not the best um, so how do you handle time series analysis and once again if you just uh, use the out of the shelf algorithms you might actually end up making the wrong decision okay um, so understanding the math behind it always help you I see. make the right prediction so to speak and how so if you were to present in front of a, your um, your CEO or your board Okay, this is my prediction, but this is my confidence interval. This is what it means. Um, I'm that confident, or actually, you know, the algorithm is not good. This is also a huge concern. Mm -hmm. For instance, that tools will always give you a result. Yeah. Um, and it's easy to just, you know, like art, interpret them, making sense, especially for the ones who don't understand them. Mm. Um, but yeah, you need see to, what you want to see exactly data, yeah. kind of thing so you need to know okay that model mm. is not good those results are not the one I should be having mm. um, so these are our examples or um, where understanding the math would help significantly help you being a better data scientist okay how so far can we actually go on explaining algorithms and models um, I would say the limit tends to be neural networks and deep learning so to speak like the old Oh, no, yeah, all the linear regressions up to the random forest cart algorithms, those can be somehow mathematically proven. And uh, you need to be very bright, but it's doable. You can prove that the algorithm actually works. 
But on deep learning, there's a lot of work on, you know, explaining how did the algorithm came to that conclusion, um, how to certify that this algorithm will surely work um, in this specific context. And, and this is the limit where, uh, that, this is where I drew the line in. It's a latest advance in deep learning because we, the model do works, it, and without doubt it works, but explaining why, and just ask yourself, would you, would you go on a plane driven or flown by yeah. a deep learning model? Yeah. And I would, nowadays, I wouldn't. You know, specific industries like uh, aeronautics or defense, those kind of, of uh, companies, um, they are working on it and experiencing those kind of techniques, mm -hmm. but there's another story in putting them in production. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's why the good old linear regression uh, <laughs> is usually quite well, works quite yeah. well. Uh, but yeah, so that's what, this is where I would draw the line, but it doesn't mean that they are not interesting. Um, but you need, to, once again, you need to be aware of those limits mm. and up to which extent you can actually use them. Uh, so and what's your opinion on uh, our data and big data and machine learning services? I would say one of the milestones has been SageMaker. Mm -hmm. And I know you've been lot, doing a lot of video, but trust yeah. me, um, as a teacher, when we when we set up, you know, Jupiter, and when you have to do it by hands and installing Jupiter and everything, some data scientists not wanting to do too much system IT um, are more than happy when you click a button. Here's your Jupiter, help yourself. So, but yeah, SageMaker is probably my my favorite because it makes my life so much easier, and the fact that you know you can just launch and get. You're training on other instances, all those kind of things. Although thing. um, um, uh, we're still waiting for the Jeep Racer car to be launched in France uh, to play yeah. around at school, but <laughs> you hear that? Okay. So yeah, we're looking. This is not. To... <laughs> this is not getting cut. <laughs> so yeah, we're still. Looking... We need Jeep Racer in France. In France, we need to be able to buy it. I'm just asking you to buy it, you know, <laughs> just to be able to. And elsewhere, it. not just France. No, yeah, I'm I'm pushing with my own. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but, um, and the one I use the most, I would say, also is uh, recognition. Okay. To be able to quickly show, okay, you want to do some AI mm -hmm. proof of concept. You don't have to go and implement the whole uh, deep learning model, train it for weeks. Mm -hmm. Somebody at always did it for you. And if you want to prove that you know, facial recognition works or object detection works, here's a simple API called play around with it. In a few hours, you can make a, a fairly good um, proof of concept. Mm -hmm that would prove to your manager or end users that this is what you will actually There's a business able. case for that. There's a business yeah. case. And this is what data scientists tend to forget, the actual business case. They, they, they tend to focus on where, how can I get 99%, but then do you need 99%? Should I use Adam or should I use SGD? Or, <laughs> or should I write my own? <laughs> or should I write, this is my best favorite, or should I write, good luck, my friend? <laughs> So Leo, uh, this is great. We could continue for hours, but we're <laughs> almost out of time. So I guess my last question is, um, how do you start your data engineer career, right? Okay. If you're a developer and you're interested in that role, how do you get started? My best advice is find one of the certifications on one of the providers you, you have online and try to follow the courses because passing those professional certification, you usually have a quite well-structured path okay. towards it. Um, and then look into the industry you're, you're interested in and uh, what kind of technology, what kind of IT challenges they are the encounters, so are they able to, you know, there's, there's no need to go into DevOps if you are, uh, if you're not in, a, in, a, in, a, in an industry that actually, you know, it's mature enough for that kind of thing. Yeah, okay. um, if you're still in a company not mature, you will probably end up, you know, handling a lot of data wrangling, a lot of SQL, hmm. a lot of kind of things. So DevOps might be a bit further, further down the road. So depending on which kind of industry, but those, those pla online platform really uh, get you started on high quality courses. Okay. So this is where I would start. Okay, and I'm afraid of the yeah. answer, but then if you want to be a data scientist, where do you start? Um, <laughs> I would say the uh, Andrew NG machine learning would be the good okay, place to start. Well, Andrew, <laughs> everyone loves you. That, would, that, that has changed lives, I think, that book. All of you say that, but yeah, I agree. No, it's... It's because it, for me, it's the perfect trade-off between IT and math. Um, so I would start there and then um, I would, once again, you can't be a, uh, a full data scientist, meaning you understand from 
every single aspect of every single algorithm. So it's more about what kind of application you want to do. Because if you want to do, you know, pure industrialized application, you're probably just going to need the basic linear regression logistic mm. up to boost maybe or so down. If you're really interested in to advance AI, to, to take the term, um, are you interested in computer vision or in, in NLP? And then, you know, take those framework that out of the box can help you follow and get something quick and then specialize yourself in one of those areas um, to develop your uh, real expertise. Real yeah. expertise, mm -hmm. exactly. Because if you want to be a full data scientist, you need, you're gonna, you need, you're gonna need to spend time in class, obviously. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, getting into your job, uh, that would be good. And of course, for every single data scientist, are, don't be afraid of IT because you will do a lot of IT. See, it's not just me. Right? <laughs> okay. So yeah, <laughs> this is all sorry. right. Learn about the cloud, guys. <laughs> yeah. That's usually good okay, start. Leo. This was really, really great. Thanks again for, Thank you very for much. joining me today, wow, and mm -hmm. uh, I'll put all the details about DSTI in the video description. Uh, check them out. Get in touch with Leo on LinkedIn if you have questions. Meet us up, and uh, I'll see you soon with another episode. Thank you very Bye. much. Thank you. Thank you.